Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm going to show you something very, very interesting when it comes to uh, reading fiqh text. So this is an example. This is a chapter of Ijara. So we're talking about rental contracts. Now, uh, I, before I say anything, I'm not really interested in the ruling itself. But what I want to show you is how jurists um, and fuqaha, the people that we take our mas'ala from, really, really reflected deeply, not only on the hadith, but they reason with hadith, uh, they looked at the Quran, but they also looked at something very, very important, which is society, um, the people around them and how society was functioning. And you'll see that even when they give a ruling behind the particular ruling, there's a lot of uh, intertextuality. What do I mean by that? There's a lot of detail that emerges from that. So let me give an example. So he says, وَيَجُوزُ أَخْزُ so he says that um, it's permissible to take money uh, for um, cupping and um, for the hammam, the bathhouse, right? So you can charge for people to use a bath, bath, a public bathhouse and to do cupping. That's, that's all it says. He doesn't go into the detail, but the fake text is teaching you how to think. So then in the footnotes, you'll find something very, very interesting um, that... He says, look, when someone takes money, uh, charges people money to go there um, to clean themselves, this is sahih, this is okay, and it's okay for them to take some payment. And then he quotes a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, um, you know, this was something that was allowed. And also, not just only the hadith, because this is something that's ta'aruf bayn al-nas. Yani people do this anyway, and people do this everywhere. People pay to use a hammam. Now, why is this important? Someone might say that um, there's a problem here because when you use a public bathhouse, you pay a fixed amount of money. For example, you'll pay five pounds to use it for, for a certain time, but there's some ambiguity in what you're getting. Are you using it for an hour? Are you using it for two hours? How much water are you going to be used? So some people might say, well, this is not permissible because we don't know how long you're going to be in the bathhouse. We don't know how much you're going to use of the facilities of the bathhouse. And therefore, there's some ambiguity. And in the Sharia, when there's ambiguity, we need to sort of um, think about it deeply. But then he says, no, this is something that people do and people are happy to do this. Right. And there's ijma as well. So people agree, ulama agree, ala jawazi zalik, that it's permissible. Now, however, he says, well, there is also another opinion. This is why it's really, really important, because teaching you that difference of opinions can exist as well. Wamin al ulama, there are some ulama who say it's disliked. They don't say it's haram, but they say it's disliked. Now remember, in the Hanafi Madhab, we don't make things haram unless we have strong evidence that it's haram. So the fuqaha are really, really careful um, because it's for God and the Prophet ﷺ to make something impermissible. So they will make, they will say karahiya. And he cites um, the Prophet ﷺ has said it's the ev most evil of places. So you have two statements here from the Prophet. Now one says it's allowed, one says it's not. Well, one says it's not a good place rather. And then you have the Amal of Uthman that he, he himself called it um, House of Shaitan. And so there's some jahala in it, right? Because we don't know um, um, how much more water that's going to be used, how long you're going to stay there for. So what I want to show you here is that even when they make a statement, the fuqaha tell you that there are differences of opinion and there's some sort of flexibility. And then he says, was sahih huwal awwal. This is really important. When they say, was sahih huwal awwal, i.e. the first opinion, which is permissibility, is the one that's sahih. Um, it's saying that there's a debate here. So when you see, when you read the word sahih in fiqh text, it's telling you that there's debate amongst the fuqaha on this. All right, that's very, very important to read um, because people think that, oh, it's black and white, but it's not. The fuqaha are debating this. And then he says, li'annahum, um, uh, they don't they don't they don't when people do this they don't think about jahala so in other words he's responding to this objection that people have that we don't know how much water you're going to use we don't know how long you're going to be there when people pay five pounds to use a um a bath house a public bath house they're okay with it perhaps the best example today is like a gym right people know that they pay they pay monthly five pounds or 15 pounds or 20 pounds whatever they pay for a gym and um they're okay with doing that, even though you might use the gym once, you might use the gym twice, you might never use the gym that month. But people are happy to do this. Um, and this is very, very important. لا تفضي إلى المنازعة And it doesn't lead to fights. So you don't get cases where people are arguing that, you know, I paid 
um, a gym this much money and I've never used it and I want my money back. No, it's people are happy that you, you're paying for the um, access to the service. Okay. And then he says that uh, here women and men are equal. And this is obviously um, ob an objection that some people might have that uh, women can't go to the bathhouses. Of course, um, there's segregation without without the doubt. And um, this is um, like um, and who sorry, who was and he also says that people need to do this in those days. Um, not everyone in their homes had a um, a bathtub. Not everyone had a shower, a boiler, the stuff that we have, the luxuries that we have in the modern age. In those days, people couldn't always uh, avail of those services. And this is really important because it's telling you something about history, about society, that in those times there was a need for it. So the fiqh, what what is fiqh? Fiqh is to know sociology. Fiqh is to know. Um, society. This is why it's really, really important for fuqaha to live in a real world, to be aware of um, the real world. And then he says, Bal He says, in their time, it's actually more important for women to go because women need to stay clean and so forth as well. And then he just responds to this Uthman, Uthman statement, may Allah be pleased with him, um, that he, he objected f to the um, going of the uh, bathhouse because he was worried that um, a natural concern that people's um, body parts would be exposed. So again, can you see how even the fuqaha among themselves are debating the hadith and what the hadith actually means. This is why we don't go straight to hadith, especially people like me who don't know anything. We shouldn't go straight to hadith. Rather, we should uh, look at what the Judas are saying because they understand the hadith and they'll make sense of it for you. And uh, and this is what the Prophet ﷺ meant as well. right? Um, so. Again, it's contextual, okay. Um, but the Sheikh himself, he gives his own opinion, and this is really important. Even though the the position is that people can go to the bathhouse and the hammam, but he says, look, uh, in our time, fi zamanina, and this is really really important. Again, language is so important. Zamanina, again, in our time, in our day and age, the sociology has changed. Fil karahate, we 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 feel, I feel, um, that. Um, it's not good for them to go because there's the reason he gives is um, the body is being exposed as well. And there's khawf of fitna as well and the fear of fitna. But again, look, the madhab is saying that you can go, but the sheikh himself is not afraid to say, well, in our time, things have changed. So sociology, knowing society, knowing people, knowing how people live is very, very important. I hope that's been useful. I'll share some more if you feel that I need to. And please do share comments. Please do share this with people. And... Um, I will share more videos and produce more videos if you think this is, is useful. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.